one. Welcome back to the 52 Weeks to Wealth. My name is Walter Morello, and we've been going through the journey of the last 52 weeks. We are now week 13. We did this last year. We went all the way through, and we started over. And now at week 13, we're talking about your culture. You want to have what Low Wealth Principle 13 is build a contagious culture in your business. Write this down in your business and in your marketing. Build a contagious culture in your business and in your marketing. We, wealth Principle 13 is lucky, Wealth Principle 13, because at this point, we've gone through, we've talked about the size of your business, what it has to be. We've talked about how to structure your business. We've talked about increasing income through increments and surges, tracking and focusing on your net worth that your business must solve a problem. We've talked about marketing, doubling down on marketing that is working. We've talked about alleviating a frustration experienced by a large enough group of people. And now we're moving into the culture. Hands to the camera if you've ever run a business with more than one person before. Excellent. Hands to the camera if you've ever been inside of a business with more than one person before. <laughs> There's a lot more of you, excellent. The culture, is really important. If you've ever found something you didn't like about the business, it can always be traced back to the culture. If there's ever been something you're working for somebody else that you didn't like, it can always be traced back to the culture. I learned culture pretty early on. I learned how a business should operate. And I was very blessed to have two really shitty jobs in the beginning that taught me how the culture shouldn't be. And then I went to work for Walmart back when Sam Walton was still alive. And it, the culture was still very strong. It was very much how he had created it. And if you think about what Sam had created, by that time, he'd had over 3,000 stores. It was a multi-billion dollar company from one store, from one setup 20, 30 years prior. He'd started and built this massive, over 100,000 people working for him at the time that I, when I started working there. And part of the culture was to educate you on that. Part of the culture was to let you know about Sam Walton driving around in his truck. The story of the owner, the story of how it started was in the culture. But here's the most powerful thing about Walmart's culture that I really loved when I was there. Write this down. It's very key. Respect for the individual. Respect for the individual. This was number one of their rules. Everywhere in every office, the back office, it was never in the front of the store, but always in the back office. As soon as you walked into the back room, respect for the individual, written on the wall. As soon as you got into the break room, respect for the individual, written on the wall. As soon as you got into the locker room, respect for individual, written on the wall. Always, wherever you would go behind those doors, behind the, the front of the store, it always said respect for the individual. Because he understood the biggest problem in business, the biggest problem in any any place where you have multiple people together is the culture. And how could you quickly and easily define a culture that would explode, a culture that would hold together? It was respect for the individual, both yourself and the person in front of you. Not respect for the group, because when you respect for the group, you have problems. But if you respect each person in the group, respect the individual, you have a really strong, great culture. And that culture was what allowed Sam Walton to build one of the greatest department stores across the country, a store that every single one of you has experienced, has touched your life in one way or the other. Hands the camera if you've ever been to a Walmart. Hands the camera if you ever had a bad experience at a Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Hands the camera if you ever bought something and went back again, though, because it still provided a superior experience for you in terms of price. <laughs> So, or convenience. Here's, here's another example of culture that you can leverage, you can use in your business. And by the way, it's not just the business. That, that culture didn't just stop at the back door. The culture also went out into the front of the store. And in the front of the store, you always saw that the price was lower there than somewhere else. Is that true? Anytime you went to Walmart, they talk about the rollbacks, better price than their competitors. They're not so much about it now, but back then when Walmart, when Sam Walton was around, that was his thing. It was, we would beat anybody. We were going to be the lowest price. And so their value proposition was contagious. It would get clients and customers to go out and find the prices of other people to be competitive. They even encouraged you to bring in other people's ads, save them the trouble. 
bring in other people's ads, let us know. We'll roll it back. Contagious, right? Who here has ever heard somebody talk about a rollback, but they weren't in Walmart? Really? Yeah, people, people use it. It's like saying clearance. Clearance was a, a term from clearing out stores. The rollbacks were something that Walmart ran. And for a while, you would say, oh, they rolled it back. The, the price got a rollback. And that, that was a Walmart term. That was new from Walmart. They created such a contagious culture that you knew that a rollback meant price drop. They didn't say clearance because that would have been the same as everybody else. It would have had a cheap feeling to it. Whereas rollback had a new sound to it, had a new experience to it, had something different. It was unique. And so they would roll back a price and you'd get excited about the rollback. Hands to the camera if you remember these. Yes. <clears throat> so the culture got you talking about it. Oh, there was a rollback at Walmart. What the hell is a rollback? What is this? And now you're telling your friend something new, something exciting, something different. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> Let me tell you what a rollback is. It's a lot like clearance, except it's at Walmart. And they got a little smiley face that bounces around the store and he does these things. You remember this, right? Every single one of you. That's quality branding. And the branding is quality because it was contagious. It was caught on by other people. Other people caught it and then had to go and sell it. The shirts, right? The shirts are this way for a reason. 100 millionaires. What does that mean? Are you a club of 100 millionaires? Are you, are you, do you have a net worth of 100 millions? Let me tell you about it. It, me and, and my tribe are on a mission to build 100 millionaires. When Julie has to explain to somebody, well, I'm part of this community that is on a mission to build 100 millionaires. When you wear the shirt, Names on Deeds, I see a few of you wearing the shirt, Names on Deeds. Well, what does that mean? Ah, so I'm a real estate investor. I, my whole job, my whole purpose as a real estate investor is actually a lot simpler than I used to think it was. Now I just put my name on deeds. That's it. I don't have to flip houses. I don't have to do the work. I don't have to go and renovate or deal with tenants. I just put my name on deeds. That makes sense. It allows you to talk about it. And now other people will go and talk after that and say, did you know the secret to real estate investing is putting your name on the deed? <laughs> I didn't even know this. It's nuts. All right. Ryan McDermott said it to me once. He's like, man, I never thought of it that way. That's crazy. Just put your name on deeds. It's really that simple. By making the culture something memorable, Making your business something memorable, something that can stick to other people. But with a real estate agent, hence the camera for your real estate agent. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Let your investors know the whole point of real estate is to get your name on deeds. It's like the easiest close. Yeah, this is how we do it, by the way. We just put your name on deeds. Super secret sauce is somebody else has their name on the deed. And we're going to go have a conversation with them and put your name on the deed. And then you win. Hold for a long time, collect rent, you're a real estate investor. That's simple. The question now is how do I get my name on more deeds? So I want to do an exercise with you because I believe exercises are very important to memorizing things and they're very key to making sure that you go out after this and do things because the 52 weeks of wealth is all about you taking action. Hands to the camera if you like to take action. Yes. Because action is what brings the results. If you don't take action, if you don't go out and do something, then nothing happens. Next week we show up and all you're doing is consuming content. And look, I know the content is great to consume. Yeah, you know, I consume too. Sometimes I'll go back and I'll watch my 52 weeks of wealth. Or even better, during the week I am training on the 52 weeks of wealth, I'm implementing these things into my business. While I'm preparing for this training, I'm implementing. I'm thinking, how am I putting this in? Have I put this in yet? Right, Dr. Terry? So we're putting them into our business through the week. So by the time I get to Saturday, I've already implemented it. I've already been having the conversation with my team. Hey, let's make sure that we do this. It's got to be contagious. It's got to be, you know, it's got to make things stick. It's got to go and multiply itself afterwards. The definition of contagious, right, is a virus, right? The virus goes, it latches in and it just, it spreads, right? Or an antibody, you know, we could say antibody, right? Your business is an antibody. <laughs> it goes out there and it, it spreads and it tackles the virus, which is in our case, poverty or negative mindset. The idea is to go out and spread as quickly as we possibly can 
and keep multiplying so that more and more people can have the abundance that you're experiencing today. The awareness that it's possible to build a great business, to have a great life, to have all the coolest people around you and have fun doing it and have a powerful impact. It is entirely possible and it's easier to do when you believe it is. And it's entirely impossible when you don't believe it. There's plenty of people in your life right now that you can think of. And I want you, before we do this exercise, I want you to think about those people who definitely don't think it's possible for them. There's people in your life. Hanson can if you have these people in your life. You're like, they definitely don't think it's possible for them. And just the thought of them having a conversation with me, a strategy session on building a business, you're like, they, they would just be like, no, it's not possible. Like, you know, they would fight it, right? And since can't, if you know, these people would fight it tooth and nail. Like they would not take a thing from, from what I'm saying. You're right. It is impossible for them. It is absolutely impossible. You can't save them. Don't even worry about it. You know, Doreen and I have this conversation often. Mike Shine actually had the conversation with me the other day because, you know, he, this person was doing something. He offered advice. And like, don't give me advice. Whoa, <laughs> you're right. I don't know what I was thinking. We only give advice when the question is asked because otherwise the person's not ready. I don't sell any of my programs. I don't sell real estate unless I'm asked a question. Now I put myself and you should put yourself into a position to ask questions, to get questions asked, be out there, be aware, let people ask you questions, set the hook, right? Make part of your culture enticing a question. Make part of your business culture, your marketing culture to ask a question or to set up for a question, right? Your marketing should set up for a question. It should get people saying, how do I do that? It should get people saying, how do I work with you? What is it you do? When can I start? <laughs> your marketing, your culture has to create a question to be asked to you. So that you can now service the problem. Hands to care if this is making sense. All right. So now exercise time. I want you to think about your business. I want to think about your business very specifically, the one you're in right now today, because that's the one you can expand the most. I want you to think about the business and think about what drew you to it. Think about what drew you to it originally. The need, the desire, the want. Was it ego? Was it service? Was it fun? Just think about what drew you to it originally. And then right on the side of that, does everybody have that? Sometimes I don't give enough time. We've, we've got... Walter, okay. question. Yes. Are we talking about our business or any, any business that attracted us? Any business talking? wouldn't do you value right now. So do not be distracted by other businesses. Your business is the only business in the world. Hands to the camera if you commit to one business. Yes. Unless you're already a millionaire, you're stuck in one. You haven't earned the right to have two. Does that make sense? Do we commit? Thank you, Dorena. Great question. Thank you for sharing. So the problem with focusing on other people's businesses, other things that have attracted you during this exercise is you will have no action step after this exercise. So... We must focus on your business right now. And I want you to focus on an experience or a energy or a word or a thing that drew you into this business initially, drew you into this business that you're doing currently in the first place. What drew you in personally? Hands up if you've got it written down. Hands up if you need more time. Pick it on her, Lena. Hurry up, girl. Come on. No, it's a nice looking shirt, though. You look good. <laughs> all right. All right. So you want to make sure that you've been very clear. Remember back to the business when you first started it. The business that makes you the most money, the business that you're in. I want to be very clear. The business you're in currently, the one that you make money from currently, drew you into it. Now I want you to write on the side of it, on the side of it, what question were you asking at that time? The first time you used the service or the first time you thought about the service, the first time you were drawn to the need of the service or the product that you provide, what question were you asking at that time? 
this business, for example, if, if I'll give you some examples, teaching and coaching. I was at the time asking, how the fuck do I make money? <laughs> how the hell do I get out of this painful situation in my life? Like, this sucks. Like, how do I do this? And then I later got my real estate license or I had my license at the time. And what got me into real estate was how do I buy more real estate? How do I get more properties? Like, I want more properties. How do I get more properties? That's why I got into real estate. That's why I got my license. I want access to MLS and I want access to behind the scenes. Another business that we, we have is referrals from coaches. So Dr. Terry, Ryan, when I send business to our friends, they'll send me a little referral fee. And the reason that business exists is because I had a question in my head. How do I help more people without me losing my entire life, without me spending all of my time doing it? How do I scale this to help a thousand people a year or 10,000 people a year and have a massive impact without hating my life when I wake up in the morning because I have no time and actually being impactful. Because if I'm, if I'm working more than, I don't know, 10, 25 people at a time, like I'm not really going to be impactful. I, I need to have people who can do those one-on-ones. And so I said, I've got to pay other people. I've got to bring other coaches in who are better than me, who are specialists, who, who can really specialize in something better than I can do. Built a business out of it. I was asking a question, right? How can I serve more people better? Does that help? So you were asking a question when you came into your business. You were asking a question when you came to it. What made you ask that question? This is the, this is the key to this whole lineup. This is the key to what set it all up. What made you ask that question? Now I can remember I was broke. I was broke. I couldn't pay for things. I remember my girlfriend, well, my wife at the time, she was upset because she's like, I want to go on vacation. I'd be like, well, we don't have the money. And she said, well, when are we going to have the money? I was like, it's not looking good. <laughs> and then we would go out to dinner with our friends and I, or with her parents. And I'd be like, let's split the bill. And she was like, we should be paying for this. And I was like, let's spit the bill. I don't know if you've checked the account, but there's not a lot of money in there right now. It's not looking good. And then the other conversation where she'd find out I had $10,000 saved. $10,000, not much, but I had it saved. And she said to me, oh my God, I can't believe you're so cheap. You've, you've got all this money saved and you won't pay for dinner and you don't want to go on vacation, we could use that money for vacation. And I remember those arguments. I remember that I did not like those arguments. And so I wanted to learn more about how money worked because I also knew that the only way I was ever going to get ahead is if I had money to invest. <laughs> and she didn't want money to be invested. She wanted money to be spent back into the system. And it was this constant pain for me that there had to be a better way. I'd watch these guys become millionaires at 12 years old, 15 years old, 18 years old, 25 years old, 35 years old. I watched the billionaires of the world be formed at 30 and 40 and 50 years old. And I realized there's, a, there's gotta be a path that you can follow. I'm a very system-based person, process-based person. There has to be a path, there has to be something. And so that was, the question was in my head at all times, what is it? Where is it? What does it look like? Who knows it? Who understands it? Who has this path? Who has this clarity? And I would hunt and I would look and I would go online. I was a very small person. So I just Google. I wouldn't read books yet, but I Google things. I, I probably read the entire Rich Dad Poor Dad through blog post after blog post after blog post before I read the actual book because I refused to go and read books. I had this mental stupidity at the time where I thought books were not a good idea unless there were fantasy books in which I'd crush them, right? It was ridiculous. I, I was reading the wrong books. I had no clue. I thought that those books were valuable to me and that educational business books were for boring losers. And then when I started reading them, I realized that the losers read the fantasy novels and the players read the books on business and success and personal development and real estate. And I, when I started reading, suddenly I became a player. I was no longer the guy who was the outcast. 
And then we created a culture around reading books because we identified that as one of the strengths, as one of the keys to being successful. We identified that books were necessary. And so we created a culture around it. Hands to the camera if you've read a book this week. It's a powerful culture. Give yourselves a round of applause. So you wrote down the question you were asking. You wrote down the thought you were having. That thought is your marketing message. That thought is the marketing message that will get the questions asked about your business. Asked about your mission. Some of you on here are running charity events or you have causes that you're running for. Well, understand the cause doesn't work if you tell. But if you tell a story that begs a question, write that down. Write that down. It's too easy to forget. A story that begs a question. Remember what, the mar what I started this whole training on? Contagious marketing, contagious business culture. It has to beg a question because with questions, you can, you can answer. Without questions, you have not got somebody on the hook. Who here remembers being single? Who remembers being single? Dating? Wasn't that awesome? It was a fun time. I took it as a challenge. I went out, I studied the process. I learned all the books. I got out there. And the whole point, what I discovered, what I distilled it down to when prospecting, you know, when, when sergeant, when looking for, for the, the right girl, when prospecting would be find the target, right? One, she had to be beautiful enough. She had to be in decent shape and she had to be dressed a certain way. Because that's what I knew from DISC, identified a person who would be compatible with me. Or sometimes I was looking for not compatible with me for those one night stands. By the way, not proud of my past. Just saying, this is stuff that exists. Hands to the camera if you've done things in the past that you're not exactly proud of. Wasted a ton of time for yourself? Yes. So here's the tip with, with dating was that I'd go out, I'd look for the girl, identify the target. And then my whole point was to give her a great experience until she asked me a question. I never asked a question because asking questions is boring. That's what all the other guys do. Ladies, have you ever been asked what you do for a living? Hey, what do you do? Hey, what are you going to school for? Oh, that's cool. This is what I do. Uh, <laughs> done boring, right? So I had to be different. I knew it right away. I was like, I'm going out there to give a great experience and have a great time. And then when she asks me a question, I'll take her seriously. I'll, now I'm in. If she asks me a question, I'll be like, oh, this could be a buyer for the Walter Amarillo prize, right? You, get, you may buy. <laughs> Cost of admission is cheap, right? It was very low back then. <laughs> Darina now... She pays the price daily. She listens to the books. She does the meditation. She does the, the exercise. She does the mind, mind uh, conversations later in the afternoon. And we just genuinely enjoy each other. She pays the price. No woman can pay the price she pays. Let's give Doreen a round of applause. Very, very impressive. So the moral of the story is that you've got to get them to ask a question. And it's got to be fun. They've got to find you entertaining, empowering, or educational. These are the three factors to contagiousness. Entertaining, empowering, or educational. If you fit any one of those, they may become addicted. They may latch on. They may say, mm, tastes like chocolate or tastes like sugar. Remember the last time you had something sugary or chocolatey? Even as you think about it now, you're like, I could go for that again. It's so strange. Very interesting. How the mind is, and by the way, apples are sugar too. Bananas, like oranges, all the healthy stuff has sugar in it, right? It's weird. All the stuff that you really like, that's sweet. As, as you think about it, hence the camera if you're having an experience right now, thinking about one of those in sweet. The bank. I'm going to take the money and I'm going to keep in the bank at 680000 That's the right, Kevin. Right, keep the money yes. in the bank. <laughs> So it's a, it's a trigger that has been created. You want to create those triggers in your clients and in your employees. You want those triggers created when they think about your business, they think about some sort of exciting experience and then they want to come back in. 
Mike Shine, this week we had a book. Uh, the book was Contagious. Yes. Have you read this one? I, I listened to it on Audible. Yeah. Hell yeah. Great. Mike Shine, give us the book of the week. You're yeah, so, up. Thank you. So when I was uh, listening to this book on Audible, I noticed that it was at the perfect, Walter, you put this one at the perfect time because we had just read e -Myth and we had also done Gary V's um, Crush It. And when I started listening to uh, Jonah Berger, Contagious, B-E-R-G-E-R, -E -E super smart guy, it was basically saying all the stuff that this whole community needs next. And he talks about, um, it's got a uh, acronym STEPS, S-T-E-P-P-S, which stands for social currency, triggers, emotion, public, practical value, and stories. And it's a really way for all of us to get our brand, which is who we are, noticed. And like I said, it was just at the perfect point because you're sitting there saying, all right, we've got all these ideas we want to do, but how do we how do we actually get out there in the world and show people on the internet exactly who we are and what we stand for? And uh, yeah, so I highly recommend reading this book because he goes through all those things. It's really interesting. Some of the stories in there is a $100, $100 cheesesteak in Philadelphia, the land of cheesesteaks, this restaurant to get known. Full, full disclosure, I'm a vegan, so I'm not okay with this $100 cheesesteak, but um, the, the concept was amazing. It was a, a restaurant in an area that had tons of restaurants and they needed to stand out. So they, he tells the story of a hundred dollar cheesesteak and this restaurant blew up because of it. I mean, the cheesesteak had lobster in it and Kobe steak and insane. Um, but yeah, but it got everybody talking and that was the whole point. And it became, the concept became contagious. People talked about it. Like if I told you about a hundred dollar cheesesteak you would, you would start telling your friend because that gave you some street cred. You're like, you're not going to believe this, dude. And uh, yeah, tons of cool stories in there. He also talks about a hot dog stand that had a secret phone booth where you press a number and a door opens to a secret bar that nobody knew about. Just, it's a fun book to listen to, and it gives you a lot of great ideas about how to get your brand out there. So that is the book of the week, Contagious by Jonah Berger. Jonah is my son's name, so it's also got a special name, place in my heart. Thank you. Let's give Mike Shine a round of applause. The keeper of the books, the closer, the holistic attorney, the man of many names and titles. Uh, Mike Shine does a lot of research before he presents the books. And this one, by far, is probably one of the most fun books that I have listened to as a marketer, as a business owner, as a salesperson. Listening to the book really opened my mind to how and why all the things we've been doing actually work. It creates the fundamental uh, principles behind it. And so you can be doing the work. Uh, I'll wait a little bit. To go. But understanding why it works, no worries, Mike. <laughs> he knows too, because we all look at him. <laughs> understanding why it works helps you to recreate it, helps you to do things again and again. Because hands the camera, if you've ever done something in your business, it worked once and you're like, damn, like that was really good. But then you never did it again because you forgot to do it. Yes. So happens all the time. But when you understand the principles behind it, you can go and recreate it. You can go and recreate those moments so you can create more of a success for yourself. One of the biggest problems I've seen with marketers is they hit a marketing message, they use it for a few days or a week, and then they switch their marketing message to something different. Who's done that before? Yes. The best marketing messages are boring. It's the same thing over and 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 over to a new audience, to a new audience. The problem with most marketing professionals, business owners is you're like, I'll hit this audience a thousand times with different messages. It's gonna be awesome. Just one marketing message, make it the one, make it, you know, make it a crusher and then spread. Don't stay in one place, keep spreading out. Keep taking that marketing message to the people who will listen. Keep getting it out as far as you possibly can. Now, there's a continuity side to the people you've already hit. Like the people who are yours, who've closed with you in the past, yes, there's a whole different marketing strategy for them. That's a continuity problem. That's a value add program. That's deliver value, deliver value, deliver value. Occasionally bring a product that delivers even more value, right? Which speaking of, 
Hands to the camera if you want to learn how to buy more multifamilies with no money out of pocket. No money out of pocket. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Everybody. Looks like everybody wants to buy more multifamilies. Hands to the camera if you'd like to buy multifamilies for passive income. Passive income would be the goal. Excellent. I see everybody there. Hands are up. We've got a training for you, but I want to ask one more question to make sure it's the right one. Do you have a desire to have massive passive income from multifamilies? And would you like to close on those deals this year? Hands to the camera if that's true for you. Excellent. So then the timing of this training is correct. It's coming out in two weeks. It's two days. And let me ask one more question. Would you be willing to commit an entire weekend to learning the steps to buying multifamilies with other people's money and cash flowing passively? Would that be worth it to you to learn those in two days? Excellent. Well, then I have permission to talk about the multifamily passive investive training we're doing May 8th and 9th. It's Saturday and Sunday. I'll be going over the details of how to evaluate a multifamily deal. I'll be talking about how to find multifamily deals, how to build teams to hunt for multifamily deals for you as well, how you can hunt for them yourself, how to find those sellers, how to ask the questions that get the financing handled for you. Not just, hey, raise private capital, not just go to a commercial lender, not just go and get a, a seller, not just assume the existing mortgage, but all of the little pieces in between to have that conversation so you see which one sticks. And then the series and process that goes through it, by the way, it's not done overnight. You do not go, nobody ever in there, like in my experience, nobody's ever gone out and said, hey, will you sell our finance for me? <laughs> and it's worked. Like that just doesn't happen. Hey, will you assume the mortgage? Like, can I assume the mortgage? Sometimes a commercial that does happen, but they usually have a big gap in the down payment. And now you've got to come up with the down payment for that. And so the gap lending, the private money, nobody, nobody has ever gone out and asked a friend. And on the first time you said, hey, can I borrow $100,000 to go buy this multifamily? And they said, yes, that just doesn't happen. Hands to the camera if you recognize that. There is a process behind building relationships. There's a process behind bringing capital in. There is a process behind getting it, not getting, but inspiring sellers to carry paper, inspiring sellers to allow you to keep the existing mortgage in place. There is a process to all of this. There is a process to talking to commercial lenders. There's a process to finding the right commercial lenders when dealing with multifamily. By the way, multifamily is better if you're unemployed or you, you are self-employed. If you got the W-2, sure, rock that, you know, three to five unit, three to four unit game for the next five houses. But at some point, they cut you off. And then you're multifamily anyway. Hands to the camera if that makes sense. You're either multifamily or single family flips. You don't have much of a choice after, after those first couple houses with your W-2. So eventually, you're forced into the role that we've been playing for years. And that's where you want to be because the properties are bigger. The deals are better. There's more money in the game. Hands to the camera if you'd like to know the process to get all this done. And you'd be willing and you know you're going to commit May 8th and May 9th to this event. Excellent. Excellent. May 8th and May 9th, I will not be teaching it again because my time is valuable and I have other projects and other programs that I want to teach. There's other things that I want to do that I think are really key. I may teach it at some point next year, but this year I am focusing on the event that's coming up on, Adrena, when is the three-day event that's coming up? Get the deal, get the money. In October? October. October. Do you have you picked a date? Yes, we actually were picking day with Ryan McDermott, and I'm looking at it as we speak. It's um, October 20th through 22nd, which is actually Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then my question to you, if you want to shift it over to a weekend. Weekend? Yeah, it should be. It should be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It should, yeah, so I can get my Sunday off. Okay. <laughs> But that's okay. So it's going to be the October 21st. If Ryan McDermott is okay with that. <laughs> Check with Ryan, make sure he's good. Excellent. So that, that event's coming up and I got to start preparing for it. But 
I want to teach this one because Mike Shine asked for it. He said, this is, this is the one that would make the most sense right now for the community. This is the one that makes sense for him to learn. It is $488. It is less expensive than the other programs I've put you in before. Hands the camera if you recognize it's less expensive than the other programs you have bought already. Yes. It is more intensive. It will be more intensive. So you've got to make sure that you're there. You got to make sure that you're present. And it will be canceled if people don't sign up within the next, we'll say 48 hours. I told Doreen already, if we don't have anybody sign up within the next 48 hours, I'm not going to promote it. I'm just going to push to the event at the end of the year. So it is a sign up, pay the ticket today. Do not wait the two weeks to the event because I just will not do the event if I don't have enough people signed up in advance. Does that make sense? Excellent. And that's just for me. That's literally so that I can focus on other things. I want to make sure that if there's people who are committed, then I will commit. I will do the, I will do the event. But if there's nobody committed in the next, I'll say 48 hours, then I know it's, it's something the community is not ready for. And I'll just push on to the next uh, stage of what I'm doing for marketing, which by the way, I'm in the same place as you right now. I'm exploding my marketing. I am pushing in a harder, bigger way than I ever have jumping on podcasts, just video after video on platform after platform. I am about to crush the TikTok game, by the way. Like you're about to see my face all over TikTok. It's going to be nuts. And they, that takes time. It takes understanding, takes studying, takes practice. It takes tweaking. And so I've, I know what's best for the company and for the training company. And it is getting out there. It is expanding. It is getting more people to know what we're doing. The only way I can build 100 millionaires is if all of us are pushing our marketing, if all of us are building 100 millionaires. That's the only way that I can get to my goal. And so I have to go out and do it, right? What do I always say? Learn it, do it, and then I'll teach it. it. That's right. I'll delegate. I'll teach <laughs> it. Exactly. So as soon I, in order for me to teach you how to build and expand your marketing and your business, I've got to go do it. It's a new world. There's new platforms I'm jumping in. I've never played with LinkedIn the way I'm about to go into LinkedIn. I've never, I've never done TikTok the way I'm about to go do TikTok. And so like, I will have a new training for you. I've never hit Facebook the way I'm about to go hit Facebook. I'm bringing on a team of professionals. We're hitting Facebook ads. I've never hit Facebook ads in an effective way. We spent a hundred bucks this week and we made two sales. We brought two people into the wholesaling boot camp, which is mind blowing to me because we've never made money on ads. Now we're, we're at a point where we've got the right people and ads are being productive. Like they're actually being productive. And here's what Mike Gabriel told me. He said, dude, these first ads aren't even supposed to get a sale. They're just branding ads and they're converting. That's nuts. That's how, that's how you know you've got a team who's much better than you on the project. So we're about to go out and expand. So I want to teach the course if you want the course taught, but I can, I can do other things if that's what makes sense. Like if, if this doesn't seem like the right time for you guys to take this course, I totally get it. I will know by buttons pushed. That, that fair to say? Excellent. Darina, what is the link? If somebody wants access to it, you already put it in the chat. You're freaking awesome. The link is ibuildmillionaires.com forward slash passive. I build millionaires.com forward slash passive, or you can click Darina's link. And if you're an affiliate, you could click your own link. Hands to the camera if you recognize you can make a little money or save yourself a little bit of money by clicking your own link as an affiliate. Yes, that's a very smart move. <laughs> All right, so the that is the boot camp. Uh, let's see. Jake and Gino are doing their event on October 22nd, 24th. Why are you telling me this? Uh, Darina, is there, there a reason you're telling me that? Are we, I can't hear you, you're muted. Because you always wanna know what's going on um, cool. in the real estate space at the same time. So you could back to back be in Orlando. Cool. Oh well. Yeah, well, I'm sharing with everybody. You could be back to back in Orlando with us from October 21st to October 24th, you can do our event and then you can do the Jake and Gino event. Is that is that how that works out, Dorina? Is that what it looks like? I think they're overlapping a little bit. Yes. Uh, how are they overlapping? We got, where's the 21st the 22nd. Oh, I see it, I see it. Well, our, man, ours is way better anyway. But Jake and Gino <laughs> can be great for networking. So 
It actually makes a lot of sense. You go crush it alchemist style, then you go and network at Jacob Gino, catch the last day. The last day is where all the serious people are anyway. The first day they all disappear. Like everybody shows up and then they all disappear. And on the last day, it's only the, the players that stick around. Hands to the camp, if you know you're one of the players, you stick around for the last day. Yeah, me too. That's where all the money's made. That's when the networking is real. That's when you get people who like were there for information, there to take themselves to the next level. I like it. Awesome. So you won't be teaching 52 weeks of wealth on Saturday. Oh no, I will be. I, I 52 weeks of wealth. It will be a part of the uh, passive multifamily investing training. I will not skip the 52 weeks of wealth. Hands to the camera if you, you recognize. I don't care if I'm in an island somewhere. Like you're gonna get the 52 weeks of wealth that's coming at you no matter what if i'm doing a, a live like three weekend three day training i will be stopping said training and they're now going to be doing the 52 weeks of wealth with us does that make sense it does not matter what what stage i'm on the 52 weeks of wealth will be hit and if for whatever reason you know joe rogan's got me on his podcast on a saturday morning at 10 a.m then mike shine will be teaching the 52 weeks of wealth while i'm out <laughs> Well, he has in the past. Let's give Mike a round of applause. Thank you uh, for being able to do that. Same with Dr. Terry Wager. I know another coach who could handle it for us. So it's a, it's a very, very possible process to adjust your business, to adjust your marketing, to adjust your strategy. Just a, there's a little tweak or a question to be asked or a story to be told that will get people talking about you more, that will get people excited to be working for you that will get people happy and enjoyably moving in a growth direction. And the key to do this, you can do this with your friendships. You can do this with your inner circle, just your friends are around you. You can change the dynamic of that friendship and that relationship. You can change the dynamic in your community just by instilling one new habit, one new thought, one new principle. Right, we were talking about the books a little while ago. Who here has done their net worth tracker? Check their net worth, excellent. Who here has had a question about cryptocurrency in the last month? Yes, we started talking about it. And so it's become more and more of a question. Who here has since becoming a part of this community is like obsessed with buying a multifamily right now? Yeah, it's like nuts, right? It's nuts. Like who's putting in offers? Who's actively putting in offers each week, setting a goal for themselves, put offers in. Awesome. Awesome. That's a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing. We said, hey, the cool kids put in offers. Let's go. And everyone of you was cool. So we've got to put in offers together. Let's do this. Let's keep putting offers in. That's part of the culture. Names on deeds, 100 millionaires. Who knows they're going to build 100 millionaires once they made their mill? That's right. That's right. I've got a group of amazing people around me. And this was a, an affirmation I said this before I knew any of you. Years ago, I said this, I said, man, I told Ron in meetings, bro, I could see us just pulling this amazing community together. I could see us being impactful. I could see us changing our city. I, I was fo so focused on Fall River. In fact, I told Darina yesterday, I said, when, when we were coming to, when, I, when we came to this whole, this whole process of you know, the mission, the vision and everything, I was in Vegas and I, I, I was at a point where I just said, and I just want to know what I'm here for. Like, just give me the opportunity to serve in a big way. Like, what could be the thing that I could do? And I, I was thinking about my city. How do I improve my city? You know, it was Fall River, Massachusetts. The, it was the drug capital of the state, the heroin capital of the state, you know, the biggest crime rate. We'd fight with New Bedford and Fall River to see who could be the, the person who shot the most people that month. And it was, I knew it was possible to change. And when I was in Vegas, I said, just how do I do it? Like, what is it that I do? How, do, how can I do this? And I, I, I remember it hit me. The only way to do it is the landlords control the tenant. So we, have as landlords, must kick out the bad tenants. But the problem is the tenants have to go somewhere. And if so if we're not controlling the other landlords and hold, helping them hold the line, then they're just going to go to another landlord down the street. And so the realization was I needed a, a management association, a property management association or a landlord association. So I built the South Coast Capital, uh, South Coast Real Estate Investors Association. And that was, and I did, I built fall over landlords. 
and we started promoting and we started filling rooms. We started teaching and training landlords. Hey, this is how it's done. And it became just, I was no longer talking to my competition. I, I was no longer talking to people who I was competing with to buy property. I was on a mission to solve the city's problems. Does that make sense? And it was contagious. You say that to another landlord, we're like, fuck yeah. Like get, get me on that. I, yeah. It's not my fault. My tenants are good. It's Jose down the street. He's got the bad tenant. Man, if we could all band together, maybe we could all go get Jose to do the right thing. Maybe we could just help him get the right tenant, right? And, and it became a, a culture from a thought that it could be better. It could be better. And I, I, I remember asking, like, just let me serve. Let me serve. What does the world need? Like, and I, I went bigger than just fall. I said, what does the world need? And I came to, like, mentally, we're a little bit lost, right? As a, as a society, as a, as a community, as a culture, I think that America is a little bit lost. They're fighting over the wrong things. They're money obsessed. You know, that's why they work 40 hours a week, right? Who, who goes to work for 40 hours a week to make 30 grand a year? Like that's an obsession, right? That's a, that's obsession with a small amount of money, right? Who, who works all of these hours? I remember I, I was obsessed with money. I would work 60 hours a week to make $45,000. I was obsessed with money. Now, I don't put in any work. I just I have phone calls with people I like, right? I have conversations, a caring conversation with my friends. And I'm on track to make about a half a million dollars that I'm looking to reinvest. I've just got to keep reinvesting this in other, other aspects, but I'm looking at the income that's coming in. That's not even including the, the properties we're acquiring. That's just deal flow. That's just, you know, the, the training company and deal flow. Thanks to Julie Bradley, by the way, opening my eyes on the, the income potential here in this business. It's ridiculous how much money comes in, but I'm not focused on the money. I'm here doing a, a mission. I'm serving a, a purpose. I'm helping people's lives. Does that make sense? Darina asked me last night, she said it to me, and you, you may be having this, but it has to become part of your culture. We don't work for money. Right? She asked me, she said, babe, you say that all the time, but do you mean it? And I looked at it with the most shocked look in my face. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> do I mean it? Like, if I worked for money, my income wouldn't be what it is. If I worked for money, I, like, I, would, I would be out there being an agent right now because I can make the money a lot faster. I can just go drum up that business. It's something I have in me. Like I've, I've got the experience, the skill set. If I worked for money, I'd be doing 10 times more flips right now. The flips pay really, really well. And they cost almost none of my time. I don't work for money. I work for a mission. I work for a purpose. And I told her, I was like, you don't see the coaching calls I'm on. You know, when, when I'm in this room, you're looking at me, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at each one of you. And I told Irina this, I said, when you speak, the problem is you're looking at yourself. When I speak, I'm looking at everybody in the room. I'm identifying their eyes, their, their facial recognition, like their, their like Kevin Pereira right now, right? I'm, I'm identifying the, the attention that they're giving me. If this, if it makes sense, I keep talking. If it doesn't make sense, I adjust. I have to. I'm like, so to understand the connection I have with you, right? That's what I'm here for. I see what you're looking for. I see what you're relying on. I see when I said something that makes sense, that, that works. And I see something that's engaging and pulling you in. And I say, okay, this is something that's important. Hands to the camera if you've experienced that. You've seen like, damn, it's like he just answered something that was in my head. Like I was just thinking that. And he, he went and he delivered. That's how I, I work, not for money, but for a cause, the connections. The reason South Coast Capital is still in business, Ron and I, like we looked at the books early in the year and we said, dude, we should just sell everything and just put our money in stocks and crypto. We'd be fucking rich. Like there it is. We'd be just passive income. And I told him, I was like, yeah, we could do that, but I want to build a billion dollar company. And right now I'm not motivated to build a billion dollar company because of this conversation we're having. So we need partners. We need somebody else that will hold me accountable to go and build. That's why we opened up South Coast Capital Investments because Ron was not a, a big enough partner to force me to build a billion dollars. He was ready to retire right there. Ron, is that true? You, you'd buy the boat right now? Still am. <laughs> so it's, no, he's still in. He, he's in all the way. But, but the point is that it was too easy for he and I to just have that conversation and be like, yeah, you know what? Let's shut it down. Let's just pack up and go south and we'll just do training. So in order to stay in the game, bringing partners in, now I'm accountable to my partners. 
Now I've got more people that I'm accountable to. Now I've got their money that I have to go raise. It's the reason I, I would have, I wouldn't have been in South Coast in the first place if it wasn't for Ron. I told him I was going to make him filthy fucking rich. I made a commitment. Now he's at that point and he's like, that's good. Let's, let's continue. Let's keep growing. Bring other people in. Now it makes me inspired. And I told her like, and you've all had this question. Does Walter actually do it to, you know, for the reason he says, or does it do it for money? I do it for your money, right? When, when I make the commitment and you and I are now partners, I'm in on the deal with you. If I mess up, you suffer. And so I have a hard time letting anybody around me suffer because I've suffered enough in my life. Does that make sense? You'll find out. You'll find out what I'm talking about when you take on partners. You never want to let them down. You will see what I mean when you start borrowing money from other people, people that you like. I only borrow from people I like. You'll see what I mean when you start expanding your business. You'll notice that person pushing you. Mitch Jorsky is experiencing it right now. He's like, dude, I make so much money on crypto. I don't even know why I'm in real estate. And then he says, oh yeah, I remember because my, my buddy, Tim, you know, I got to financially make him free and you know, he's, he's got no play. So this is like the only play that he has. So I got to keep doing that with him. He gets it, right? You'll get it. I promise your culture can't be about the money. The money is important. It has to be there. Like don't do things that don't pay, right? Like don't do things that couldn't one day pay. I'm all about long-term investments where, you know, one, five years from now, this could be pay out. Cool. Do that. But if it's never going to pay, or right? if you're hanging around with, with broke people, if you're hanging around with people who don't ever want to change, never want to change. If you're trying to serve people who don't want to change and you're trying to change them, that's bad timing. But if you hang around motivated people, people who want more, people who want to change their lives, people who want to improve their lives, who are looking to be better every day, people who want to grow, people who want to expand, take life to the next level and see what's possible, just to see what's possible. You know why I'm building a billion dollar company? Just to see what's possible. Just to see if a kid from Fall River can go and organize a bunch of people around, become, make, make them millionaires, build a hundred millionaires and build a company worth having, build a company worth being proud of, build a company worth talking about and take that company public and then retire a whole bunch of people off of that. A hundred millionaires, right? The only way I could think to do it was this way. Answer the camera if you've ever thought of a better strategy, right? Or if this is, this seems like a pretty solid plan. Will it take commitment? Of course. Look, the time's going to go by anyway. The time is going to go by anyway. You might as well aim at something big. So your business right now, commit, commit to making something contagious about your marketing, making something contagious about your business philosophy. It can't be about the money because if it's about the money, you'll find somebody who comes in and takes it away from you. Somebody who believes in a mission, somebody who believes in a purpose will take that business in a heartbeat. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen people come in who had a passion for what they were doing. I saw the business owner had, was all about money. And then they, I saw somebody come in who had a passion and just whoosh, everybody left, went, followed them. And it made sense. They were right to do it because someone with passion, someone with a purpose and a vision will last much longer than somebody who's just out there for money. Does that make sense? It's staying power, staying power. I'm constantly looking for staying power in my life and my business what can I use to keep me here doing this? What can I use to keep me focused? I use accountability. I, I love partnerships, holds me accountable. I use goals. I use challenges. Sometimes I'll just put something in front of me that is absolutely ridiculously difficult just to see if I can do it. Is it possible for you? Every Sunday, uh, this is a special request from, uh, from Dave Cadero. Dave was asking me if, if I could put in my Sunday routine. Who would like to know what I do on Sundays? Who's interested to know what Sunday looks like? All right. So Sunday's a special day for me. All day during the week from morning till noon, I booked something. Because if I'm not booked, I don't do anything. If I find any time on my calendar where nothing is there, I'm instantly playing a video game or playing a video game or listening to music. Does that make sense? And so I know myself, I know the compulsive obsessive nature that I have. And so every day from 10 o'clock on, I have something booked. 
because otherwise my mind will just go back to what it enjoys the most, which is solving problems. And the easiest problems to solve are the ones on the virtual screen. Human problems are a little more complex, a lot more fun, but not as easy. And so I make sure that every day from 10 o'clock, something is scheduled every day from 10 o'clock on something is scheduled. And I, sometimes I don't let that schedule stop until 10 o'clock at night, but it's with the key people. It's with players. It's with Darina. It's with Ron. It's with Mike. It's with Terry. It's with my coaching students, right? It's with the people who've paid to be there. It's people who have committed to the hundred millionaires. I'm only hanging out with people who've committed to the hundred millionaires. And then the only other conversations I'll have throughout the rest of the week are people who might commit to the hundred millionaires, people who run podcasts, people who are influencers, people who have uh, already a voice out there. So looking to attract new wood, put some new wood on the fire. On Sunday though, on Sunday, I have one thing on my calendar every Sunday. It says, come up with 20 ideas. It says, think about big conversations I can have, focus on the vision. And that's it. I do nothing on Sunday. Absolutely nothing on Sunday. Ask me to do something on Sunday, I'll say it's Sunday. I'm not doing it. I don't answer to texts. I don't respond to anything. I do, however, have a routine that I follow. I wake up on Sunday, I open my eyes, and I smile. And I say, thank God it's Sunday. I made it. I made it to Sunday. This day is so fantastic. Nobody can touch me. Nobody can ask me anything. I don't have to be uh, sharp. I don't have to be on top of my game. I can just lay here in bed, be in me. And it makes me feel so excited. And then I go and I, I turn my alarm to go off in five more minutes and I go back to sleep. And then the alarm goes back off. Five minutes later, I wake up and I think the same exact thought. I'm like, oh my God, it's freaking Sunday. I cannot believe I got to go back to sleep. I woke up again and it's still Sunday. Like I amp myself up four or five times before actually getting out of bed. But every time that alarm goes off and I think it's Sunday, I just remember, oh my, I've got all day to myself, all freaking day to myself. I earned it and I will defend it. Every time the alarm goes off and I wake up, I'm, I'm feeling more excited about the day. I, I like deeply in gratitude. And I set, I always set my alarm way before I have to wake up for this exact practice. This is part of my practice. I used to, by the way, hands to the camera if you ever did this, I used to set the alarm early, not get up and feel guilty about it. Then I changed it. Now I set the alarm and I get excited that I get to be awake today. I get excited that I get to be awake today. I'm gonna to go back to sleep and do this again. That was a fun experience. I, I, I experienced the gratitude. Look, if you're like me and you know, I'm gonna do this no matter what, I like to ease into the day by waking up a number of times. I just changed my story around it. I just changed my story around it so that I could ease my way into the day and feel I get more amped up every time the, the alarm went off. I am more excited, like, ah, yeah, I'm about to go crush it. So Sunday, I'm, I feel particularly blessed because I know that I'm going to come up with an amazing idea today. I start the day off. I just know it. I know today I'm going to come up with an amazing idea. I'm going to make a connection and somebody in my network is going to be improved. And I just, I know today something is coming to me and I've got it. I, I can't wait to figure it out. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to that thought and it's going to be enjoyable. And then I reach over and I grab my phone and I press play on the science of getting rich. And I start my day. And I start my day and that I just, I go and I just clean the house up. By the way, your house, you could clean it up, make it look a little nicer, right? Anything I haven't touched in the last 48 hours, shit gets put away. It gets put in a drawer. You know, I smoke these vapes. So if I got vapes lying around, I'm like, nope, this doesn't belong on the kitchen counter. This doesn't belong here. Everything gets cleaned up as I'm listening to the science of getting rich, because I don't do well sitting down, listening to books. I like to move a little bit. I like to have a little bit of movement with me. But I also don't want to be in the outside world while I'm listening to this book. And so as I'm moving around, I'm cleaning my house. I have a practice where it just feels good. You know, spraying bleach. I'm like, yeah, making money, right? Like, let's go. Science of getting rich. Little, little activities. But it, it makes me feel good knowing the house is nice and clean. And next week, I can destroy it. But I know, like, Sunday, I'm going to make sure it's all nice. And, dude, I keep my house clean anyway. I'm too lazy to go and make a mess, right? Because <laughs> I know who's got to clean it up later. <laughs> so 
Sunday becomes a very peaceful experience for me. I do some meditation, I do some yoga. And once the book is done, I'll go to Taco Bell. I'll, I'll treat myself, you know, to the, the three burritos or I'll go down to the, to the place that has, uh, what is it? They got this Cuban sandwich, it's freaking phenomenal, uh, tropical something. And then I'm listening to the next book. I'm listening to the next book, something that is going to get my mind moving. I'm very cautious with the books I choose on Sunday. These books have to be inspirational. They have to be books that are going to inspire me in the business where I'm at right now. And for the most part, I spend the day in silence. I listen to music. I may play video games, but I will, I will do it in a way where I'm exercising. I'm moving. I'm doing a lot of movement. And Doreen is usually out of the house, right? There's one of the things I set up really early on was like, either you're out of the house or I'm out of the house, but that, and that's fine. But Sunday is, is a day where I've got to be left alone. I can lock myself in my office fat if it ever had to become a thing. And we meet up afterwards. I encourage her to go do her Sunday. I do my Sunday and we'll meet up afterwards. And then we talk for like three, four hours. Sometimes it goes till midnight where we're just talking about the vision, like what, what I came up with, what problems I solved, the details I was able to nail down on the vision. You know, every, every time I think about it on a Sunday, I nail something new down, something new that I, I wasn't aware of that was out there. I, I put a person into place, right? Julie Bradley, perfect example, or Andrew Casal, just lock something into place. Jonathan Mello, right? Like every one of you slowly, Kevin Pereira, Elizabeth Miller, like now that I'm thinking about you all, I'm like, okay. Like, and I, the other thing that I do is I focus on the community. I focus on the community and then I go one by one. And I think of each person. I think of each person. I think, how can I serve them? What are they looking for? What are their desires? What are their goals? Where are they looking to be? What is missing? What can I create? And I just go down the line, person by person by person. So if you get a text from me on a Sunday, you know why. It's because I was thinking about you and I came up with something that I could benefit somehow your life or, or somebody else's life. There was a way to, to tie people together. So if you get a con, if you see, hear me message you on a Sunday, it's the only reason I would do it because I was in flow. I was in flow and I was like, you know what? This, this would make sense. That's my Sunday. And I strongly suggest that each one of you adopt it in some form of way because that time to relax, that time to think about your business in a relaxed, nothing has to be done today way. And I do not, I refuse to do any work on Sunday. You will not see me go and make any changes. You will not see me. Like if I do something on Sunday, it's videos. I will, I will do videos if... I feel inspired. If I feel like, man, this message just needs to get out, I may do videos on Sunday because I'm, I'm inspired. I'm in that moment. But the, the work doesn't get done. I just write it down. Man, Sunday is the best. I'm, I'm making future Walter my little bitch. I'm like, bro, you're going to get all this shit done. Like, you go out, you're going to get it done. Like, yes, exactly, Jillian. Like, your future self is going to work so hard and so effectively if you spend Sunday planning it out and don't waste a whole bunch of time for them. Don't give them a whole bunch of bullshit with all sorts of shitty lead times. And they're going to do this six times a week. No, put it all in one time. Like give them one shot to bang it all out and then give them something else. You can really be intentional when you're planning out the week for yourself. Care enough about yourself to plan your week out. All right. Plan it out on Sunday so that you can make sure the rest of the week is powerful. That's why my calendar can be booked so tight. Darina said, she said, your Friday is insane. Your Friday is absolutely insane from seven o'clock to uh, from 10 o'clock in the morning to 6 30 at night. You don't have a second. You don't have a single second. I tell her, I know I planned it out in my head. I just make sure that I grab a Taco Bell early enough so I can just eat one of those tacos every two to three hours. So like they're just sitting there and I'm just like drink water tacos. Like I just, the only thing I do is I run to the bathroom. I run to the, to get some water and I'm right back in the desk. And like, it's my most leveraged time. Like it's, I just crush it on Fridays. Does that make sense? Setting the context for yourself for the week is so powerful. You can do it. I want to open it up to coaches, by the way. <laughs> the coaches are part of the contagious uh, impact that you experience, contagious culture. Who's been told by a coach? Yeah, we don't use the word need. Right. That, that's no, we don't use the word try. Sorry. Uh, it's either I will or I won't. Right. I do. I am the coaches. Before, Go ahead, Dorita. Before we get to coaches, uh, let's talk about that wonderful 
donation or charity Ew. or how yes. do you want to call it? Anonymous though. Yes. So anonymous uh, person has volunteered. Uh, somebody went and purchased the mentorship and then they asked us if we would give it to a woman in need, if we would give it to a, a woman who has uh, was a single mother. So she said, this is a really important uh, calling for me. I want to donate. I think that this is the, the best thing that I could do. And I'd like to have a, a single mother who's you know struggling or um, would like to uh, join the mentorship. Would you do this for me? And I said, yes, of course. Of course, right? What? Answer the camera if it's like, that's an obvious yes, of course. So if you know somebody who is a single mother who would be interested in the mentorship, who they would take uh, full advantage of it. It would be impactful for them, change their lives. Uh, we have a mentorship already paid for by a very generous person who wants to see a, a single mother taken care of. So if you can put it out on Facebook, ask your friends, uh, text somebody, reach out, find someone who that you you believe is uh, fits the uh, fits the bill, right? We'll just have a conversation with them. If you say this person is worthy, they're worthy. Do me the favor and go and find that person right? This is free. It's not going to cost them anything. We're going to bring them into the mentorship. It's already paid for. And we're going to treat them and serve them the same way we served you when you came into the program. So it's a, um, yeah, thank you, Darina, for the reminder. Let's give Darina a round of applause. Man, I don't know what I would do without her, without Ron, without the coaches, without the volunteers. Each one of you is so impactful in this mission and moving things forward. I don't know what I would do without the students. I learn from you so much each week. You have no idea how much I'm taking from your eyes, from your, your facial expressions, from your nodding. I learned so much from each one of you. So let's give yourselves a round of applause for bringing the coaches on. Thank you so much for helping me grow and, and build this community to be something huge and impactful. First up, Dr. Terry Wager. Thank you very much. Uh, I am actually going to let Doug go first, but I'm going to read it for him because he cannot use his camera or voice right now. He's on a bus. Oh, that's right. And so he says, I'm still on the bus, so I can't share on camera or voice. Great call, as always, Gwalter. Culture is huge, and the intentional plan Terry just mentioned is so key. We all have our internal culture. We have different parts within us that we need to align. That's brand contagion. We need to be our mission's greatest raving fan. And I couldn't agree more with him. Um, way to go, Doug. That's awesome. Uh, you know, as far as what I'm thinking about that is uh, I jumped on this mission with you because it is a contagious mission. And Christine and I want to build our company with a hundred millionaires, we want to help a hundred people build their million dollar businesses. And it's just giving back to the community, giving back to the world and helping people find their ability to create financial freedom. You know, financial freedom is a skill, you know, it's, it's not a goal and really understanding how to get out of our own way so that we can be empowered, so that we can be moving forward, so we can be courageous and walk through all of the things that don't work. Um, because, you know, it doesn't matter who we are, we're going to run into stuff that just doesn't work. And whether it doesn't work a little bit or it's a complete flop, you got to keep going. And, you know, sometimes those complete flops, the deal falls through, the, the friendships don't work in some way. You have somebody you're counting on, it doesn't work out you keep going without holding the grudge, without being upset. It's just what's next. And I think that's a contagious culture as well. I like it. Let's give Dr. Terry Wager and Doug McGurk a round of applause. Teaming up to support the community. You know, I like what you said there, Terry. It is, it is a, a factor that I, I don't talk about it enough, but as you said, I was like, man, we got to talk about this because financial freedom, financial security, is a skill set. It is not a goal. It is a skill set. I've been asked many times, how long will it take me to become financially free? Well, how much are you willing to change about your life? I can do it with any level of income. I can do it with any trade. It does not matter. I can do it very quickly. Financial freedom is very easy to create. What are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to sacrifice the life for financial freedom? Or do you want financial freedom at your certain existing level? Well, in which case that could take some time. 
But financial freedom is a, is a strategy. It is a belief system. It is a I cost less than I make system. That's it. Financial freedom is not a goal to attain to. Either you reduce your cost or you increase your income. That's it. Financial freedom is, is very, very, very simple. And it's a strategy. And that's one of the strategies that Dr. Terry Wager and Christine McGinley work on over at Generator Coaching. Ryan McDermott, before you have to run off and play some soccer. You know exactly <laughs> where I'm going. <laughs> Hang on one second. Two seconds here. And while we're okay. waiting for Ryan, let me uh, let me share for the mastermind. Dorina, today is mastermind, right? Or is it next week? It's today. today. Okay, today, mastermind. So we meet at 12, get some food. Ryan, you ready? I am ready. All right. Um, yeah, so you, you, you kind of made me think of uh, something or, you know, something you said very early on today. Uh, you know, that you had two awful jobs, um, you know, as a, as a young professional, which is something I can relate to because I had exactly that, two awful jobs. Uh, there's no backstories on any of those companies, no mission statement. If, if any of those, if any of that existed, it wasn't communicated, uh, certainly not to me. Um, my high school job, though, did, you know, McDonald's, it actually had a real culture. They, they had an entire university that managers would attend to learn the culture and communicate it to everybody else. Um, you know, fast forward years later, you know, I'm now in charge of, you know, my own businesses and, you know, I took a vacation, you know, uh, to Disney World, you know, with my seven-year-old son and he was begging the whole time about, you know, a Buzz Lightyear toy, you know, and, uh, you know, we don't want to be dragging a Buzz Lightyear toy all around the park. So it's like, all right, we'll wait until the last day to go get it. You know, so of course what happens, uh, we go and that stand is closed and now we are left making a seven-year-old very, very sad. And a teenage employee of Disney World who was sweeping floors came over and figured out what was going on, asked how she could help. You know, and I explained the situation. I said, you know, don't worry about it. There's nothing you can do. She whipped out a walkie-talkie. Some guy came from out of nowhere, like from like behind a bush, opened that stand up, handed my kid the toy and like saved the day, you know? And so, you know, that employee solved my son's problem but he gave, you know, they gave me a customer experience that I have never forgotten. That I'll tell, I'll tell everybody about that story who will listen. You know, when I do most of the time, the people will come back and tell me that they've had a similar story at that place. You know, and so the question I kind of ask myself as a business owner are, you know, am I going above and beyond like the employees? Are, are my employees going above and beyond? Um, if they're not, isn't that worth striving for isn't that isn't that what we should really be all about you know and so you know it comes into mission and brand and you know part of my brand is to you know show vulnerability you know about my day-to-day -day in running a business and building a business and making investments in real estate in fact i'm going live right now on facebook <laughs> as we do that's what i was fumbling around with before um so do me a favor follow me you know so i can go viral and become contagious all at the same time thanks Let's give Ryan McDermott a round of applause. It's great advice. It's great advice. If you're not asking your friends to follow you, you're missing out on a great opportunity to be followed by great people. So great, great uh, pieces of advice, Ryan. And I love the branding you've been doing. Increase energy, increase activity, increase awareness. Darina, your takeaway. Yeah, Mike, it's because I forget about her sometimes. I'll never forget about you, bro. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that all the time? Okay, I'm being forgotten. Um, but yes, I first of all, Walter, I'm amazed how you just wake up 10 minutes before the call and you just pour this knowledge out of somewhere. You always like carry it and you never prepare for the call. It just comes out. It's amazing. I'm I am impressed every single time. It's because I'm thinking about it all week. <laughs> It's, it's crazy. So, so thank you for a great lesson. It was very interactive, very um, in, entertaining uh, in a way. And uh, yes, my biggest takeaway is like uh, what question um, I was putting myself back in the story when I started real estate, like what was the question I was asking? What did the company who impressed me and uh, made me think a different way uh, deliver it that I got a question for them and by asking those questions, 
they they sold a program which I'm so blessed and thankful that I that I got and that was five years ago right that's without that I wouldn't be um here and that question that I had is like okay how you know what's the system what's the how that will change my life and get me out of mediocrity and I was working just a regular job didn't know any better my dream was to be in corporate America and and I'll be an immigrant like oh yeah I made it I'm working for Fidelity Investment this is like the best thing ever and then I went to the event and they told me like oh no wait you can expand like you can do but I didn't use those words surges and increments but like hey with real estate this is open to every single person on this planet you just don't know about it I was like, oh, how do I, how do I learn it? How do I start? How do I get my first deal? And they showed me the way and I was in for life. So they became contagious for me because they showed me vulnerability. They showed me other people's stories. They showed me that this is doable for me, realistic. And I... I jumped in and that became my business and that became my story. And I'm like, if anybody comes to me, this is, this is my aha that I share with them all the time. And my goal is to ask that question and have people ask me that question. And I had never looked at it this way, but that's exactly what happened. I had the question that started the process, that started my journey. So culture that triggers the question and have the customers back for the question. That's so brilliant. So that's my biggest takeaway. And if you want more people to follow you, go viral like Ryan McDermott. I'm pretty sure he triggers questions during his videos and people start following him and becoming contagious and become a part of the mission. And I truly hope that our mission building millionaires is super, super contagious. So that's why we're all here. So that's like my takeaway. I'm so excited. I love it. Let's give Dorina a round of applause. Mike Shine, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep letting the ladies go first. Kim Rodriguez, can you give us some tips or what your biggest takeaway was? Hi, Walter. Hi, everyone. Uh, culture is. I really love talking about culture, so I'm going to keep it brief. But the one thing today that you said that made me go, wow, was when we're creating, you know, we all had this challenge where we were starting to do live uh, videos, right? And some of us have businesses which we're actively, intently promoting. And, and some of us are creating our businesses. And some of the people on the call today may be creating their businesses or and many have them and your culture and the marketing that you're doing says a lot about you right and being that real authentic self and letting that shine through will help make your business grow that much further and i saw a lot of that today but today you said um and and i'm going to relate it back to the theme that i had just because it, it related to me and hopefully relate to you i chose the theme of making the uncomfortable comfortable, right? And then I kind of switched the theme. And you said, have your message, right? Or what is your culture? And don't keep switching it up. Be consistent and just make it contagious, right? Make it blow up. So thank you. You're doing a great job, Walter. I'm so happy that we're connected and I'm part of this community where it's just so awesome. Thank you. Let's give Kim Rodriguez a round of applause. Great takeaway. We saved the best for last, Mike. It's the only way I could get to say that. <laughs> You're up, brother. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I just want to say, holy crap, Brian. You got Brenda and I crying over here, over Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> That's just an amazing story. That's just an amazing story. And uh, obviously, the women are crushing it. Um, something that really struck me, well, first of all, let's give Gualter a round of applause because we always forget to give him a round of applause and he totally deserves it, crushing it. Um, but when you were talking about questions, that, that was something brand new to me, like what questions, 
And I thought of two times I was uh, working for my dad, just renting spaces in his building. And there were these mortgage guys and I was just asking them what their business was. And that led to me opening a title company. And it's just, what question do you ask? Just walking through the halls. I was just kind of dead end. I wasn't even practicing law. I was just sort of helping my dad rent these properties. And then I said to him, what do they do? And they say, we do, we do uh, real estate mortgages and boom, out of that question, we started a company and worked together for 10 years. And that's how I became a real estate attorney. That was amazing. And then the other one is I was on a ski trip with uh, realtors and mortgage people. And I look over at this uh, guy I sort of knew. And, um, and I said to him, what, what book are you reading? Because we had a three hour trip up to Loon Mountain. And he pulls out the Miracle Morning. And I was like, Wow, and that completely changed Brenda and my life completely. Because as soon as I read that book, he, Hal Elrod says, start tomorrow, even if you don't have an accountability partner. And I said to Brenda, hey, I'm gonna start this miracle morning tomorrow. And she was, even though she hadn't read the book, she's like, I'm in. So we started and it led to all the books that I'm reading, all the, the morning routine like you were talking about, and it all came from from one one question. And uh, yeah, so that's that was an eye opener for me when you said what was the question. And I really saw what my path came from asking questions. So don't fail to ask questions. Thank you. I love it. Let's give Mike Shine a round of applause. Today's training, was it valuable? Yes. Now it takes three to five years to become successful. Ask me how I know. I did it in five years but I was willing to spend seven years. I was willing to do 10 years. I was willing to do 15 years because I was sick and tired of not being able to do the things that I wanted to do, what a man's supposed to do, provide for his family, go on vacations, be able to buy the nice things, have those different opportunities. I wasn't able to do the things that make you feel free. And so I made a commitment to myself. I said, no matter what it takes, I'm going to become successful. When I do, I'm going to teach a lot of people. And I did it through buying real estate. I bought one house and I bought another house and I bought another house. I got all the way up to 42 units and I sold down to 12. And then I bought back up to 50, back to 60, to 68. And now Ron and I are working very, very diligently to build a hundred units, 500 units, thousand unit company. And we're doing it in a steady, stable manner through building 100 millionaires, having a massive impact. You can be impactful. You don't know where you're going. You just know that you're going to get there. You've got to see how big you could be and just set the plan, start moving towards it and not worry about the details on the way. Yes, trouble will befall you. Yes, there will be obstacles. Freaking awesome. Makes your story better. When I was broke and had nothing. I was worth less than I was born with, worth negative $25,000. When I got my credit cards racked up to $150,000, when I lost my job, when I was in deals where I owed people 300,000, when I owed people $3 million and it was getting tight. At every single point in the game, I know I'm writing my next cool story. No matter how bad it gets, there's always, there's always a lesson to be learned. There's some way to get to a better position. You just have to hold on. You just have to keep moving in the right direction. Keep asking questions. Keep staying focused on where you want to go. And don't worry along the way. Yes, some shit will happen. We're here for you. That's what the mentorship is all about. We're here for you. We've committed to you. The coaches are here. We're millionaires. Sometimes our millions are in question and we fight back to get them to hold on to them. If the market tanks, we have to fight back to hold our positions. Does that make sense? So we're in it with you every day. Market fluctuations affect us the same way they affect you. And we understand that. And so we're always pushing and growing to be beyond a point where the market could affect us, to be well diversified enough where the market couldn't affect us. But in the beginning, you need focus. You need to be focused on one thing. Focus on yourself, build yourself, build your business, then start making an investment in one particular arena. 
and improve your skill set in that arena. Keep building your business, keep making investments. Eventually you get to the level that we're at, you start diversifying. And it is fun. Diversifying is freaking fun because that FOMO you've been having your entire life while you're building, you can finally itch a little bit. You can almost like, oh my God, I get to finally invest in something different. <laughs> you know, it's a freaking, it's a blast, right? That's what the 100 Millionaires podcast is all about. But until you get there, you have not earned the right to be looking at other investments. Focus on yourself, then on your business, and then pick one asset class that will take you to the moon, and then you can diversify. Hands to the camera, if we can make the commitment, you're going to be a millionaire. When you get there, build 100 millionaires after you. Oh, yeah. If you're in the mastermind, you know we're meeting at 12 p.m. I will see you there. Bring your question. The goal is to ask the one question that is stopping you from making a million dollars this month, this year, this week. Whatever that question is, we want to pull it out. We want to digest it. We want to give you the solution so you can start moving forward again faster. Let's give everybody in the mentorship a round of applause. Everybody who's yet to join, a round of applause. And all the future millionaires, whether you're on the call or in Facebook Live, we salute you because success is yours. Cheers to your success. We have a choice. Always, Always work, work with, with the best. Always work with the best. Uh, the best. best. The best. <laughs>